deep in the forests of Australia, exists a creature unlike any other, said to prey upon tourists by dropping onto their unsuspecting heads. The drop bear. I'm just kidding. We're building for the lovely koala today. Now that we've got the drop bear legend out of the way, let's get started. Though if any Australians could confirm in the comments that drop bears are in fact not real, that would really make me feel better about visiting. Claws aren't bears, they're marsupials, but despite their cute appearance, they can still cut you with their sharp claws and the males can get surprisingly aggressive, especially during mating season. So in today's episode, we'll be building two koala enclosures so that we can keep two males and up to four females and also separate the koalas when it needed. These enclosures are heavily inspired by my research on Zoo Chat, which you should definitely check out if you're looking for pictures of real life zoos, and more specifically by the koala enclosure in Sydney Zoo. I'll pop a picture up right now. I really love the corrugated metal look. It lines up with some of the styles we have going on in Sandstone Eco Zoo so far, as well as the more tropical backdrop as most koala habitats are very barren and kind of boring to look at. So today we're on a mission to change that. First making up this front part of the habitat with this corrugated metal wall, a plank on top, and some bark to finish off the front. I'm so surprised that koalas don't need a tall fence. Like the first thing I think of when I hear koala is climbing and eucalyptus trees, which is far from the truth in Planet Zoo, but more about that later. So the fact that they need only a meter of fencing is pretty crazy to me. Once this first wall is done, it will go all the way around the front of the enclosure, and then we'll raise up the walls on the sides to reach about 3 meters at the tallest point so the koalas still have plenty of room to climb but the backstage building doesn't seem overly tall. In the center, I'm changing out the slope slightly so that I can fit a gate in. This will allow for the male to be separated from the females when necessary and also adds a fun detail to the enclosure. It's not just a box, the koalas can move back and forth. Everyone wins! The one thing I wasn't sure of with this enclosure was the backstage. I couldn't find any references to koala backstage areas, so wasn't sure if the fences would still be only a meter tall or not. I ended up going with this mesh since the space was pretty small, and I didn't want the koalas climbing up a structure and falling onto the other side of the wall. There is of course still the chance they would climb the mesh, but for planet zoo mechanics I just turned climbing off. The one thing that really annoyed me with this habitat was the traversable area. Since the staff gate is all the way at the back, they still needed to be able to access the front portion. I thought it would be fun to have a keeper entrance and a separate koala gate. To that end, you would think that a standard Planet Zoo sized doorway would allow staff to walk through. But no, it definitely does not. So alright, one doorway it is. But for some reason, this 1.5 meter gap is not large enough for the male koala to get through. The female works just fine by the way. It's just the male whose size percentage is actually smaller. Make it make sense. Took a break to add some roofing, thought this corrugated metal worked well here. I did end up adding some extra beams for support, the Australian logs add such a nice light colour to this space. Spent quite a bit of time searching for a piece to act as the bottom and top support, but ended up making my own with these plastic circle pieces. After a slight cooldown period, I was ready to tackle these doorways and just ended up making them about 2 meters wide with this sliding door made of metal that keepers would be able to open and close. Used my regular gutter trick at the end to create a path for the door. Then to cover up some of those imperfections and also to imitate the Sydney Zoo enclosure, I used the river murals from the aquatic pack. They add a nice pop of colour and, as I said, also hide some of those annoyances with the doorway. That's the basic skeleton of the enclosure, so we're ready to add all of the care items for the koalas. The koalas will be getting a water trough on each side, and instead of a raised feeding platform which was only ever partially accessible since it's off the ground, I decided to place only the eucalyptus tree feeders. This should still satisfy their hunger needs, though this is sandbox and I turned that off, as well as hopefully entice them to climb more often because that's the only way they can get food. Managed to get three of those in there and added some more trees for those more tropical vibes we're going for. So now for the climbing structures. Remember how I said that the first thing I think of when I hear koala is climbing, and how that's not necessarily true in Planet Zoo? Well, koalas are very well known for staying on the ground in-game rather than sitting up in trees, so it feels kind of like a waste to put together complicated climbing structures for them that they will never use. 
But I have to say, as much as I disliked climbing structures before this, I kind of don't mind building them now. I think I'm getting better at visualizing rotation in the air because getting the beams to work actually wasn't too difficult. And my top tip for that is start on a platform or wherever the beam attaches to. Usually their rotation point is on the end. So place that end on your platform and then rotate from there as needed. You can also move the beam around to make sure it's resting in a believable place such as the crook of this branch. Which apparently koalas love to rest in so make sure to include plenty of those. Thanks to that Aussie bloke for that hint. My favorite platform for this enclosure however has to be this one with the chains attaching it to the palm. I thought that was a cool additional detail. Once the climbing structures are in, I'm going to decorate the ground with plenty of tropical foliage to really bring the habitat to life and be a bit more reminiscent of the forest that drop bears inhabit. Spooky. I did make sure to primarily use foliage that doesn't reduce the koala's traversable area since the habitat is quite small as it is. If you're not sure which plants are traversable or not, make sure to check out my recent video experiment. To fill up the backstage area, I used what you can probably see is another palette, kind of. I placed down all of the items I thought would work for backstages in SEZ and recolored them to my preference for this zoo. That way I can just place the blueprint down and scatter things as I see fit without worrying about color codes and the like. Makes it so much faster to fill out the clutter. Lining the backstage area with conservation slat walls so it feels like more of a building that still is nice and airy. Plus it gives me additional space for things like tool racks and bulletin boards. I threw up one of the koala signs on this bulletin board at the end, it's such a great piece. I don't think I've ever seen koalas in real life, but I do remember doing a project on them in grade 3, I want to say, and we had to make this scene out of Play-Doh on a paper plate. I still have it somewhere, I made a mama and baby koala sitting on a eucalyptus tree, and they are so blue because we didn't have grey or white Play-Doh. You can tell I was already an animal and zoo fanatic back then. With one enclosure done, I'm going to be copying this over to the other side of this little staff area, but first I want a gate in between to allow staff to enter this zone from the guest path. This will be a very similar gate to the ones in the koala enclosure, maybe a bit unrealistic because this could easily be hopped if you really wanted to, and I find if you do things with enough confidence, people don't really question it, so maybe you could find yourself in the backstage area. Since I've already shown you the setup of one koala enclosure, you'll be able to get a peek at the other one in the final cinematics. But we are going to clean up the path edges with some mulch and then add some sunshades over it, using some of the Indian fabric and the African sunshade posts that have been used elsewhere. These are also inspired by the little bit you can see in the photo from Sydney Zoo. I did also come across this excellent pathing trick recently for smoothing out edges. See how this portion is quite pointed here? Well, you can smooth it out by adding a new offshoot, but instead of adding path, right click on it to delete the new opening. It will create this nicer edge to your plaza. Thanks Digital Blob for that trick. But koalas and drop bears aren't the only thing climbing in this episode. That massive empty space will be home to a koala themed playground. So in stop motion style, I built these tree pillars and then used the mud pillar method to create a platform of wood beams. Use the same method, rotating around the central points to get the railings in place. These are just made of the painted rods and grassland poles. Connecting the two platforms, we have a bridge. This one's from the habitat tab, and then some custom rope nets to create the railings here. We also need some ways to get up to the platforms, so I came up with quite a few different ones, including this trellis made of rope, Australian circles, hinges, and gutter pieces, this net made of rope once more, I'm really loving the rough rope pieces since they are flexi color, and these stairs made of painted wood beams, rods, and the same rope. Some additional lower tree platforms between which children will be able to test their monkey bar skills, and some extra stepping stones to help them get up there. Also made a cute cuddly koala out of the Australian circle pieces to really bring that koala feel to this area. And finally, a slide made out of font pieces. These are the 3D font parentheses to finish off this main structure. But wait, there's more. This balance beam structure uses the same beams children will see in the koala enclosure. This swing set uses reclaimed wood and a recycled tire, which fits the mission of Sandstone Eco Zoo. This seesaw includes similar pieces and is a classic in most playgrounds. 
and these bouncy seats include some of the other animals you might find in the zoo, including the dingo, skink, and kangaroo. For our littlest ones, a wall maze where the leaves slide along the tracks towards the koala art piece, and on the backside, another structure so children can feel like they're climbing up to a sleeping platform, just like in the koala enclosure. Let's get all of that situated into this big empty space, and then it's time to check out everything we accomplished today. Look at this lush koala habitat. These don't happen too often in real life. Here we have our breeding pair, Yuki and Oz, and in the second enclosures, which are currently blocked off from each other, we have Bax, our male, and Waddle, our female. Perhaps we'll do a little swap once when the others have bred successfully. Next time, we'll be moving further into the tropical side of the zoo with a cassowary habitat. But for now, I want to know, how many drop bears did you see pop up throughout the video? Drop me a comment and I will see you next time. Bye.